Okay, so Guy, um, well you see Doctor, the problem is obesity runs in my family. Doctor, no, the problem is nobody runs in your family. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to Doc Off Call. Um, today what we're going to be doing is going through some medical memes and seeing if there's any truth in, in them, uh, as well as having a laugh along the way. So I got a couple of my friends to suggest some medical memes. Uh, I haven't seen them yet, so you're going to see what my sort of live reaction is to them and uh, whether there's any truth in them as well. But before we go any further, I can get you to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, uh, leave a comment down below uh, as to how you think my moustache is coming along. <laughs> All right, let's make a start. Relax, David. It's just a small surgery. Don't panic. But doctor, my name isn't David. <laughs> I know. I'm David. What? Oh, I get it. So he's, he's calming himself down. <laughs> he's calming himself down for the operation I had. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I can't say I've ever done that. And, uh, you know, the last thing you want to do on the operating th table uh, is give patients lack of confidence before they go under. Um, but typically before any operation, you sit down, you get to know the patient, you talk them through the operation, uh, the risks and complications and success rates. So, you know, hopefully it doesn't get to this to, to this stage. Okay, next one. So, uh, doctor, are you sexually active? Old woman, yes. Doctor, that's disgusting. <laughs> Oh gosh, again, it's the look on the lady's face. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it hasn't been a long time that I've had to ask sort of a sexual history from an elderly patient, but it is nonetheless important and you shouldn't ignore it um, because, you know, if someone pre presents through with symptoms that might be suggestive of a, of a sexually transmitted infection, you have to ask the questions because it could be that unless you've asked. So uh, it's really an important question to ask. Okay, so next one. Uh, if you don't shut up, I'll shove this thing down the throat. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. That's so bad. Um, but definitely, uh, when you need to inspect the throat of a child, uh, that is probably one of the most complicated examinations you're ever going to do as a doctor. Getting a child to comply to sticking a lollipop stick in their mouth. Firstly, a lollipop stick is associated with a lollipop. So what do you think the child's going to do? They're going to want to bite on it or suck on it. Uh, and they don't understand that you need to have a look at their throat. So getting them to comply is just a nightmare. And I've spent, you know, a good 10, 20 minutes in some cases to try and have a look at the back of a child's throat unsuccessfully. Um, so it takes a lot of skill. Um, and often I leave it to the last thing I do when examining a child. So next one, um, patient, I've been having trouble sleeping, doctor. Have you thought about not waking up <laughs> patient one, doctor one? Oh gosh, that is bad. I would, you would not get away with saying something like that, and I would never say it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, have you thought about not waking up? <laughs> That's so harsh. Um, it's just the face that goes alongside it uh, of the doctor. Um, anyway, next one. That's no truth in that. Um, Next one. Your insurance should cover it. But <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> oh gosh. I guess this is more of an American meme. So, um, you know, you've got like pre existing conditions for medical insurance in America. and But in the UK, you know, everything's sort of covered. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Thank you, student loans, for helping me get through medical school. I don't think I can ever repay you. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I've been out of medical school now for seven years and uh, at the end of each year I, I, I get that student loans summary of how much I've paid back and I've still got sort of over 10,000 to pay. And that was back in the day when the cost of a degree was, was three, four thousand pounds. I think it's now nine thousand pounds. So That's going to be crazy for other people. Um, let's have a look. What else? All right, so this next one, okay, Captain America, me using all my strength, can't dress and refusing to open. Now, this is very true. Um, 
and uh, the last thing you want to be doing is before you need to stick a needle into someone look like you're fiddling trying to open the equipment or not looking confident in what you're doing I remember taking it all to the bedside and the patient must have been thinking what's that for what's that for what's that for um, and it's probably better practice to do it before you get there um, so that you look slick in what you're doing and that the patient has trust in, in that you're going to do a good job for them um, and the last thing you want to do is try opening any packets with any latex gloves because it's just not going to happen so this next one okay it's Dawson Creek sort of meme uh, my work bestie was just moved to another medical or surgical floor yeah um, that's true so as a junior doctor you um, go through placements of like four to six months uh, rotations uh, before moving on and just when you you know kind of break down um, you know who your friends are gonna be and you get to know uh, the doctors you move on to the next rotation and uh, sometimes it's splitting up some really good bromances um, in fact I had a notorious um, sort of group bromance with I think it was like five other doctors we worked on a ward called the beach ward and we were known as the beach boys our bromance was so strong <laughs> and this next one so medical students watching surgery for the first time <laughs> yeah that is true that is true the thing is um, as a medical student you know we're still sort of on the same level as the public like we we, you know, when we don't have any responsibility or any accountability for anything that we do, and really, uh, I remember going into f my first operation and really wanting to seem keen to make a good impression with the surgeon, uh, and so yeah, I was sort of like beady-eyed, looking down at what they were doing. Um, but to be honest, I didn't know what I was looking at, so uh, yeah, it must have looked like cats looking in on something. I love this character. Oh, I love this character. So nurses. Uh, get called out for playing cards, anesthesio <laughs> anesthesiologist. <laughs> that was a good one, yeah. Um, I remember going into a lot of uh, operations and you see the, anaesthet the, the anaesthetist do the initial sort of um, sedation or anesthetic, but once they put that patient under for the anesthetic, um, I guess for an experienced anaesthetist, if the surgeon's actually a good competent surgeon, um, the rest of it should really go easily and you do sometimes see them doing things like crosswords and things like that so um, yeah that can that's that's that can be true dr. dog will you be willing to donate your organs patient yeah dr. dog and your bones my bones why just answer the question <laughs> Oh, clearly, you know, dogs and bones and uh, give a dog a bone. So, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, also, untrue, no such character as Dr. Dog. So the doctor says, I've got two pieces of bad news. You only have 24 hours to live. Patient, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? What's the second part? Doctor, I meant to call you yesterday. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, again, we would not give that type of information over the telephone or tell people that news over the telephone. And, uh, you know, predicting patients' death within 24 hours, I've never seen it either. So that's that's not realistic, but uh, it makes for a funny joke. Okay, and this next one. So, Doc, it hurts when I touch my shoulder. <laughs> Don't touch it. That would be $60. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, I've never given that advice, but you know it, it's funny how many people come on through who've had a you know a, a clearly had an injury where they've either twisted a knee or twisted an ankle and that hurts and they don't take pain relief. And when you tell them, okay, you can't walk or run, they're surprised to hear it. So um, you know, always reinforce simple information from that and don't assume anything. Okay, in this last one, so first day of medical school versus graduation. Oh gosh, yeah, that takes you back. Like when you when you look back at uh, you know the first year sort of photos when you were at medical school, um, I looked so young and kind of ah oh, yeah, I think I was like eighteen or seventeen. And then when you finish, you're like twenty four, twenty five, um, and you're just a completely different person to when you when you came in. Um, I didn't have the grey hairs or anything like that, but uh, you spend a good chunk of your life at medical school, really. And you know, some people can can do additional years, so the degree could be six years. You can intercalate, make it seven. 
Um, and then with your foundation training, it could be nine years. So, you know, it's a long time. And yeah, you go in looking like baby Yoda, you come out looking like old man Yoda. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I get that one. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed going through some of those medical memes. If you did like those, then please do like and subscribe. Um, if you have any comments or any future recommendations for any other memes, then either email them to uh, docoffcall2020 at Google Mail, um, or otherwise just leave them down below in the comments. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one, and uh, stay safe.